poncho tarp erected. All done. That was hard work, that was. Secured it there by a guide rope. There's the hood. And as you can see, it's this stitching that was poor. That's why there's holes in it, and that's why it was £10. Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of First Class Adventures. Today, you join me in my nan's garden. We're going to try and put up the poncho tarp, which I've never done before. I'll let you have a look at a garden. This is the back of it. Please, that's a plum tree. It's dead. There's the garden. There we go. This is like this little stony section she's got here. The chairs to sit on, so we've got plenty of space. So we're going to be setting up, or trying to set up, in this area here. I've been told we're not allowed there. <laughs> because that's... <laughs> There's grass seed there, even though there was a wood pigeon the other day eating the grass seed. I've been told I'm not allowed to go anywhere near that section. It's a big garden. And also, at the back here, somewhere around here, there's a spring, which is obviously underground. And it comes from a house all the way over that direction, over that direction over there. And they've got a well, so that part of the garden has plenty of water. Anyway, I'm jabbering on. We're going to try and put up the tom, pod, the tompro, the poncho, and uh, you can you can watch me muck that up because I've never put one up before. I have no idea. As you can see, that's what it looks like on. done is I'm gonna pull the hood tight just a little hole in the middle there pull that tight then what I'm gonna do I'm gonna scrunch it together and then with this cord I'm gonna put that around the back a bit and then I'm going to pull that down, I think, maybe like that. So then, hopefully, there's no hole, hopefully. So then that's over itself and back. Then we're going to attempt to pull it up. We'll see.
so as a first attempt as you would have seen she'll speed this footage up i'm sure i'd cut an a-frame as you can see <laughs> i put the pegs in something i shouldn't have which is where anyway there was a pigeon there eating it the other day anyway the seed so it doesn't make a difference does it anyway so that's the a-frame i don't think that looks too bad does it took a little bit of adjusting let's take that off and crawl inside because i'm so tall i reckon i could sleep in here no problem but well hopefully even if me legs are poking out the ends <sighs> i'll be quite happy under here i suppose i could sleep sideways couldn't i <clears throat> what do you have to sleep like that with my legs crossed underneath yeah, what's that i can see Oh, that's no good, is it? Epoxy houses. Oh, well, that was a cheap tarp, wasn't it? No, no, well, it cost £10. £10, anyway. If you see a poncho tarp for a tenner, my advice to you is don't buy it. It's guaranteed to have holes in it. See, this is all right up here, but it's this section. It's got a hole there, micro holes there, another micro hole there. I don't know. I may just put gorilla tape on it or something. <sighs> Especially, I've done it because they're watching as well. So I didn't want to look like a failure, did I? Right, today I'm going to show you one of my purchases, one of many, like everybody's been doing during lockdown, ultralight stove. Weighs nothing at all. So, can you see that? Anyway, it goes together. So it is just like that. This is your meth burner. Just a little tin. It's got a fibre in it. Fibre material. And that's what we're going to put the meths on. That's the lid. And this is the tiny little windbreak it comes with. We can do that. Absolutely minute. And the idea is you have the windbreak around it with it in the middle, look. Just there. There it is. So yeah, what I'll do is, um, we're actually going to try it out as well with some mess today. So what we're going to do is we're going to light that and we're going to just see how it looks. So I have no idea how it burns or anything, so you can watch it with me and we can learn together. Uh, like, subscribe and share. We don't do many of these reviews, that's why I'm not very good at it. Bear with me. Okay. Sorry about the angle. Anyway. Right, there's the stove. I think it's titanium or aluminium, I don't know. Put that on there like that. As I said, that's the little container. That's the fibre. Got to tip maths in that now. I have no idea how much. So we're not going to use much. Because I assume this can take quite a lot. You got this. Will it soak that up? 
that wasn't much. There was hardly anything actually, because that was pretty much the brim. So I've just put hardly anything in. And then, we're not boiling anything by the way. So that goes in the middle. There. We may need the windbreak around this as well. We'll have to see. Well, apparently, oh, gold, that's lit already. Okay. You can't see this. There you go. There is actually flames from it. So it, it does work, and obviously if I put the windbreak around it, I'll put the windbreak around it, bear with me, you can smell it as well. I might see it a bit better, you see that? Hopefully the flames are there. It's quite good, isn't it? Obviously, it does go everywhere, but as a lightweight camping gear, I think that's quite good, actually. And I didn't put much mess in there. And in theory, once you put the mess in there, you can then, because that's like a sponge, that will soak it up, you can then put the lid on. I'm over the moon with that. And I reckon that could last quite a while. How much is it? Uh, there you go, 125 mils, that container. 125 mils. There we go. Try right, again. Right, so, in theory, because that's a fibre, and it's like a, like a fire rope, You'd probably be able to buy that. Obviously, Amazon, eBay. I reckon I'll be able to get some more of that. Or you could just put fire rope in there. Or be in queue. So it's one of those things where you can always use it. So I'm going to attempt now not to burn myself, but I'm going to put the lid on and see if the lid works to put it out. And that's still burning, by the way. So I'm quite pleased. Right, here we go. You're all waiting for me to set myself alight. Ready for this? Hang on a minute. I can't. I've got to set myself alight. You're right, I am. Okay, so, ready? I don't think that works somehow. Hang on. I just use my fingers rightly or wrongly. Don't you use your fingers. Health and safety. All right. Don't use your fingers to put anything over a fire. Use a pair of tongs for cooking or something. Ready? Yes. It's official. You can use the lid to pop over the top. But as I said, be careful because this lid is warm. So that's a good stove and I think I'm quite impressed with that. And we're gonna use it on some camps because that's 125 mils of meths there. I only used a little bit. I mean, I didn't really test it in the way of how much water it, it would boil and all that stuff. But to carry some of that, that fiber which is here, a spare, and you'll be able to get meths really from anywhere. So even if you was doing a long haul, you're gonna to want to need shops at some point even to get more food. So in theory, that's a good stove. I don't think it'd be very safe inside the tent or in the porch, because the flames are a bit erratic. 
but if you was going out and you knew you was going to be like in the woods or somewhere like that you could use it on the outside but there's no way I'd use that inside the tent because it would go up and you'd probably, yeah, you don't really want to be roasted, dear. It's not good, but you always use it outside the tent. You should use any cooking stuff outside the tent, really. Even if you're using your gas and you've got it, just to be on the safe side. You don't want carbon monoxide poisoning and all that. I know people do do that inside the tent with the porch door open. As long as there's ventilation, you should be okay. But you wouldn't really want to use any sort of meths inside either, really. But you've got to be sensible and it's your call. It's not my call. It's your call, what you do. But it's not suggested you use any sort of cooking material. Material? Any cooking, like gas, meths, anything at all inside the tent. Just as you know that. Especially meths, because that's the last thing you need to spill, because you will set everything alight. If you're going to use a gas, uh, a little gas container with a little attachment on top to cook on you should in theory have the porch open and you should always so it's well ventilated you don't always want to cook in the rain even if meths is reliable it's not suggested you use that in a tent anyway that's the lecture over <laughs> thank you one other thing the little tin that it comes in is like an aluminium bends really easy so, I mean, you could always change that because it is, it does bend. You could always change that to a little pellet tin if you wanted and just put some of the fibre in there or some rope and you can still use it. But it's a really good idea, this. And of course, your tin foil. I stole this off me nan because she's, um, her shoulder come out of its socket and she's got a fracture underneath her armpit, I believe. I don't know about all that. But anyway, that's what we're over here for. And I've just done this to entertain her. Because she can't sit, she can't do anything for six weeks now. She's had to sit, she's got to sit in a chair. She's only been in there a week and she's already bored. Anyway, so <laughs> I'm there, I've got to show you something else. A lot of people got these, but I chose this version because I prefer this version. Right, ready? I'm sorry about these shots of my groin area. It's just that it's the only way I know to position the camera. See? I've had this, I've had this a little while now. I only used it on one camp so far. It's a tiny little UCO. I mean, everyone's got one, but I chose this one for a reason. It's not to be big and to show off. It's literally the smallest one that I could get. I've got a little pot there, which I have. Hang on a second. Just unscrewed the lid. Let me put you down and show you. little pot unscrewed the lid three candles in it they don't have to be citronella candles you can buy loads of these they're dirt cheap you know what i mean they're filthy cheap and i'll just keep them in there all comes in this little bag so this is my pot that i've got i gonna keep three candles in there not four candles three candles not four candles, three candles, all right? Don't get it wrong. So I've got that. So I keep them in the bag. I don't keep them in the bag. They're just, just some spare, ignore them. Right, so there's my little UCO candle. It's tiny, look, I mean, I'm, uh, I'm only small. Look, that's the smallest, that's as long as it is. Unscrew the bottom. There's the citron and the candle. Three prongs, it sits in there around the prongs. This is glass, you can get replaceable glass for it, but if you're careful, you won't break it. You can clean this as well. I probably won't clean it, I'll probably just scrape the wax off with my finger at the end of the day, it don't matter. It's a little 
a piece of metal at the top let the heat out and you won't burn well this day is very hot but this distributes the heat out a bit more you get the base that's threaded you turn it once you hang it on a tree or a branch and that's it but yeah I use this one to one of my camps I think this was before lockdown at the woods but anyway yeah that's why I got it and it's not too bright so no one's going to spot you and it's easy to disguise you can blow it out easily you just undo it and go and then if there's someone walking around they're not going to know you're there are they and then you just put that in there the little bag little soft bag for it there you go and what i'm going to do with this i'm going to put this in one of my oh, what are they called molly pouches i don't know i've all gone army fired all gone andy's east coast again so i'll just stick that in one of them on the outside of the bag so then it won't get broken um, and that's it really um the cook set well i'm going to be using this one because it's it's brilliant as i said you may have to change this tin because eventually this one's already got a little dent in the bottom there because it's lightweight it's aluminium it bends easy but as i said i could change this for anything a little pellet tin you can buy the same tins but metal ones and it doesn't defeat the object because it's still going to be light because you're still not carrying around a load of gear are you to cook with all you need is a pan to boil some water in and you can put your new put your noodles in there and cook it anyway i'm sorry this is dragging on i'm going to finish here so thanks for watching and joining first class adventures follow me on instagram Mark Posty one and uh, yeah we're back out again thank you very much and uh, it's wonderful to be back and it's lovely to lovely to be with you all so you can all join me on my adventures again and I've had my hair cut let's see the Mohican's gone because it was my hair was growing too quick anyway I'm going now love you bye bye